Hello everyone, my name is Web Weaver, and welcome back to another episode of World of Horror. It's Sunday. I hope it's Sunday, because if I... If IRL time skip happened again, then that means I missed Raid. But it's, uh, it's probably Sunday. <laughs> probably. Uh, anyways. Hello, welcome. It's me. Uh, we're gonna do a little, a little sudden death, very hard, quick play, um... Now, I impulse bought a game today. Oh. <laughs> One second of uh, game trailer music. Um, this, this game randomly popped up in my uh, Steam recommended, and I didn't actually see it now that I'm looking at the page. It says this game is marked as adult only, which makes sense. It's a pretty fucked up game. But uh, it came out in December of last year. And it's called, like, Fear and Hunger Termia. And it looked like, I watched the trailer, and I'm like, this is the this is cool as hell. And so, you know, I, I, I impulse bought it. And it's fucking weird. It's really, really weird. Um, but it was, like, game, or, like, similar to games you've played. And one of them was World of Horror. And then the other one was... What was the other game? It was like another horror game I have on Steam. But it's really crazy. And there's just so many like little and weird systems that the game has. That it's got such an aesthetic and a vibe. Like if you look at the UI... Like, like if you look it up on Steam. First of all, don't look it up uh, if, you know... You're under the age of 18 because it is an adult-only game. But, like, if you look it up on Steam, it's got such a fucking aesthetic. Like, it looks so good. Like, here's the thing. It looks ugly. But it, it... You know what I mean? But it just looks so good. Like, the 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 aesthetic and the art style is just too good. I could never do anything with it on YouTube unless I heavily censored it. Uh, because of the, the first enemy in the game. But, uh, you know, or at least the first enemy I found. There's multiple routes. It's so crazy. It's like, um, I, I don't, like, it's not an immersive sim. Like, it's nothing like that. But there's, like, a lot of ways that you can go about what you're trying to do. And so it feels like you have a lot of options. And you just don't know how the game works. So you get screwed over when you try them. But I'm thinking to myself, like... You know, I I'm thinking of my- Night Errand again, are you kidding me? Okay, well, at least we can't run away, so... We're gonna be fighting every enemy guaranteed, but... There's, like, so many systems, like... When you- So, at the start of the game, you have to pick a character. And there's a lot of characters. Um, I actually did not count how many characters there are. Let me see. How many- how many characters? The it says on the page, right? Eight- there's eight playable characters. You can play- there are eight playable characters. And each of them have their own intros that you can play. And it's a limited save game thing, so you have to, like, once you do the intro, you get to save. And that's the only save point that I've found so far. And so that means if you die, which you will die, because, like, every basic enemy in the game can kill you easily. Um, but, like... You know, it's just so interesting. But, like, when you go through the intro, you go through your character's backstory. And when you go through your character's backstory, you can decide, like, the key moments of their life. Like, I picked Olivia, right? And so, she is the botanist. But she also has a sister who's, like, way better at everything than she is. And so you can choose what Olivia did in her past. So, did she just focus on botany? Did she try to, out of jealousy, outdo her sister? Uh, when her sister started flirting with your professor in college, did Olivia just not care and just, like, focus on her studies? Did she report the professor to the, to the police or to the school board or whatever? Or did Olivia get jealous and then also try to flirt with the professor? Like, there's so many options that you can do. And every time you pick one of these options, you get a different perk, right? So it's like, you can basically build the character. Like, so not only are you making choices about the character's past, and you have control over that, and that actually changes the rest of the character's past, but as you're making these choices, you're actually gaining gameplay advantages. So the character that I got, you know, I played it like... I, I, I played her straight, you know, just focus on botany, 
and then specialize in toxicology. So she can make healing herbs and she can make poison herbs, right? Uh, and that basically made it to where I have advanced crafting recipes and I can harvest poisonous and dangerous plants without being injured, right? So, you know, other characters or Olivia without this perk, you would go to harvest a dangerous plant and you might get poisoned yourself in the process, which might be worth it later down the road if you really, really need it. But when you're playing as Olivia, you don't have to worry about that. And there's a bunch of other characters. There's the uh, the yellow mage, the the doctor, the child soldier, the the occultist. There's so many cool characters. And like I think from the idea of like the intro, which I have been skipping every single time because it takes like forever to get through, and you when you die, you have to go back to the beginning of the game after you choose your character's backstory. Um you know, it's a brutal game. Um, but, like, when I first did it, it was like, okay, there's 14 people here, but there can only be one winner, right? And you're allowed to play eight of these characters. So, it's such an interesting thing, because, like, the characters are all doing their own things, and you can potentially play as one of those characters and then have control over them. And so every, each of the characters has, like, their own agenda and what they're trying to do. And I just really want to explore those systems and see what variations that you can get, because it looks really cool so far. Uh, but speaking about this game, it's Look Who It Is. We got Knowledge, we got your second enemy, and we got Dexterity, Charisma, no Strength, but uh, Knowledge and Light Source. A light Source is a maybe, though. I'm still gonna get the HDF, I think. Yeah, probably I'm gonna get the HDF. Gotta remember the second enemy. But it's such a, it's such an interesting game. It is absolutely a yikes game, for sure. Like, the, it's got a lot of content warnings on the Steam page, and then it's got a lot of content warnings when you load up the game. It's absolutely brutal. But if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into, like, just a brutal, horrible game, uh, it's so interesting. Like, it, it, it genuinely is. And I, like, I'm just like, th this is so enthralling. Like, I haven't been, like, I had to stop myself from playing it because I realized I needed to do the world of horror. And then I also needed to do, you know, the, the raid because it's Sunday and I need to raid and... P8S. P8S. No, I don't want to do snakes. I don't want to go back into the snakes mines. No, it's all snakes. Everything is always snakes. We're supposed to be prog and high concept. Ah. I don't want to think about it. I'll be thinking about it for three hours tonight. I really don't want to think about it right now. But yeah, no, that game's fucking awesome. That game is really fucking awesome. Like, it could be just the initial mysticism, and the moment I understand the mechanics of the game, I'm gonna be like, oh, this is dumb as hell. But the fact that all the positive reviews on Steam are, I've spent more time dying than I have succeeding, or somebody who says, like, they have 50, it, they, they reviewed the game and they have 50 hours in it, and they're like, I still have no idea what's going on. It's like, oh, 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 oh. this is potentially really good. And so, this is number two, by the way, but, um, the first one seems like it's com like it it's a similar style. You have four playable characters, but the thing is, you're like in a dungeon, like you're in a fantasy dungeon crawling uh, crawling setting. But this one seems to be like you're in a more I don't want to say like World War Two esque thing because that's dumb. Like I don't think it is. I, I don't think it's supposed to be World War Two, but it's like you have trains, you have computers, you have like limited technology. Like, computer science is real, trains are real, but everything seems kind of, like, old-timey-esque, if that makes sense. Like, I, I don't know what time period the game is supposed to be set in. Maybe it said, and I wasn't paying attention, because I was too busy, like, looking at something else, but... There's, uh, like, when the game hits you with that fucked-up dream sequence right at the beginning, you're like, okay, I'm in for a treat. But, uh, you know absolutely like all the content warnings in the world like that is that's true and that's real but it's it's really cool it's funky it's wacky it's so weird and i i just like i really like it so far it could be bad 
And the only reason I think it's cool is that I have no idea how any of it works. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, it's very interesting because it's like, it's something that I can understand walking down, walking around in a top down environment and then getting into like RPG battles. But the thing is, those RPG battles are brutally difficult and you will die. Like the first enemy will kill you. Um, at least if you're playing Olivia. But here's the thing, I had an axe as Olivia. I randomly found an axe, and it seems like loot's randomized so somewhat. Like, I found a fucking axe that was, like, cutting off limbs in one hit. But the thing was, when I got hit, one of my limbs got cut off. One of my hands or arms got cut off. And then when I was hit again, my other arm was cut off. And so how does somebody in a wheelchair get around without, without hands? And it's like, y you just die. You, you literally, you just die. And then it's like, okay, wake up in the train, start again. <laughs> Skip the intro because it takes way too long. And it, like, it, it's so funny because like all of the dialogue moments in the game is like, when, when you get the dialogue or when you get into like a, a big dialogue, you just have the option to say, excuse me, I need to leave. And then it just skips all of the dialogue and lets you play. Because the developer knows you're going to be running through that section like 80 times before you can get to the next part. So you just have to, you know, get into it and like read it when you think that you're like okay to... When you actually think you're going to live, maybe. I don't know. But like your your first encounter with at least for me so you can go up or down i'm pretty sure away from the train i didn't know you could go up until i saw the journalist lady leave the group and then walk away well what's also interesting is that you have the ability to attack any of the main characters at any time and I think that because in the intro, the dream sequence that you have, that apparently everyone there has, all of the main characters, is that it's a competition of 14 people and only one can win. I feel like one of the endings is definitely going to be the last one standing, right? Like, it, you, you have to kill all of the other characters in some sort of, like, weird, like... I, I don't want to say fate, but, you know, that's the one thing my, my mind immediately went to, is, like, fate, the tournament for the Holy Grail. Uh, is, so you can, like, kill the other characters to try to, uh, like, win the competition or whatever. But it's such a, it's such an interesting thing to, like, see. And it's, here's the thing, it's overwhelmingly positive on Steam. And it's only got 600 reviews. So that means that the 600 lunatics who bothered to review the game love it. And then they all say the same thing, which is it's brutally difficult and insanely hard. And guess what? It is, because the first enemy will cut off both of your arms. And even if you kill the first enemy like I did, uh, what are you going to do? You you can't move. <laughs> so you just die. And it, it's kind of got that Lisa thing going on, where it's like, you need your limbs to do certain things, and if you don't have your limbs, you can't do those certain things. It's crazy. It's uh, It's absolutely wacky. Anyways, we should probably play this game. We, we should probably play this game at some point, but I, I'm just saying I found a game that I may or may not be obsessing over for a while, TM. Now, do I want to spend the doom necessary to get, like, a compass or something? Probably not. Now, with this, I think we still want to do the two funds or the the two doom here and the one fund because we do get painkillers out of it which is nice and uh wait is that our max health i can't tell i mean i'll i'll wait just in case i don't need to use this immediately anyways but i'm a little bit worried you know what you know what would be fun is if we got a uh, nice curse oh, if we got a nice perk from the history club but i, I don't actually want to do that because we're on night errant if we weren't on night errant i would be like okay yeah go for it but alas dear yorick here we are it's look who it is uh yeah sure just do it big just go just do it big it's fine <laughs> i'm sorry every time i see this art of ayaka I just think of Tails gets trolled, right? Like, I, I, like, I'm not, hold on. 
Like, I, I like, I, I'm for real. Like, like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, hold on. Can I put it up on the screen? I might be able to. Like, okay. The, the, for sure, there's got, like, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is Tails gets trolled? Okay. I literally can't... <laughs> it's the same pose, too! It's the same pose! Wait, what? I just replaced that. That was the image that I was trying to replace. Excuse me. Excuse me. Playing hard should be fun, but that's not the point that I'm trying to make here. Okay. There we go. Look, it's the, it's the same pose. It's the same. It's the same pose. The same pose. The same face. The eyes are even angled. It's Ayaka gets trolled. It is. Hold on. What's the um? Can we do an opacity here? Can we do an opacity? That would be so good. Oh, we might be- this might be weird. Oh my god, no. Oh god, no. Uh... Blending mode... Uh... No, that's not- that doesn't work either. Oh no, I should have just done this in post. I should have just done this in post. How about screen? That's kind of it. But look, it's the, it's the same. <laughs> Corporate wants you to find the difference between these two images. It's impossible. They're the same image. It, it's Ayaka gets trolled. It is. That's literally, that is what it is. Okay? You cannot change my mind. You cannot. You cannot change my mind. It is Ayaka gets trolled. A little classic devious moment. There's some image I found recently of like a helicopter carrying like a like a like a cable pylon thing, you know, like those big metal wire tower things that have like a bunch of like internet and or phone cables on them. It's like a helicopter carrying that off into the sky and it's but it, it says my most devious lick France will be so mad. I don't even know like how to I, I I don't know. True and real. We missed. Catch me losing. I mean, we have to fight, right? Like, that's just sort of the existence that we're running on right now. France will be so mad. Shit. <laughs> we're gonna die. We're gonna die on the first one. Cause the enemy's too hard to kill. No! You beast! Ayaka, but your combat sucks? Whoa! That is crazy. That shouldn't be allowed. We do a little ignoring. Can I get out of here? Like, can we just leave this mystery, like, now, immediately? Like, can we just run? Like, can we just flee? Like, lucky, uh, lucky number one in the numpad? Nope. Uh, three, six, or nine? Uh, I'm a, I'm a three. I'm a three Andy right now. I might get us killed. Oh, let's go. The three is real. Uh, okay. So what are we doing? It's look who it is. I don't know. It's look who it is. I wish I still had that bottle of water, because that, that, that'd come in handy. I've failed them, by the way. Uh, ending A's that we can get. This is random. Uh, we're getting this 100% of the time. This is random. Well, eh. 5% doom, though. Uh, and then... So, I mean, we're either taking 5% doom or we're taking no doom. And that's random. Like, it, it's ra Do you take 5% doom, yes or no? That's the random element. Which, considering that Knight Errant is 6% doom, it's basically random whether or not you fail it. Uh, getting the Spiral Hoodie is just like, you can't do that. Like, they're gonna be looking for the, for the guy who does that. I think we do Bulletin? Yeah, I think we do Bulletin. Um...
I don't like panic, to be honest with you. I don't like fearful either. I think we're going to get rid of fearful because panic can be like somewhat mitigated by just attacking 80 times in a row. However, fearful is preventing us from healing. So, uh, catch me losing? Yeah, we, we got, you gotta do that, you gotta do that. We can't take damage right now. Which, I mean, Doom's pretty bad, don't get me wrong, but it is what it is, we just gotta go for it. We are really hoping to get, you know, the blood thing, blood, ma uh, blood mania, or, you know, Eldritch Possession. I will absolutely take one of those. I think we're gonna go ahead and take... I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Because, like, we'll do a point of strength, and then we'll just kind of live with it. Do we have any injuries that I need to deal with? Nope. I don't like this happening again. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, we'll politely answer, because even if we fail, it's... Pl I mean, if we, you know, fail, we get plus doom, but we also get plus reason, so it's okay. We, we want to get some healing here. We're always going to get ending A here, so 50% doom mystery 2 is a little bit of a bummer, but it's certainly a bit more reasonable than what we're kind of used to, I guess. 3% doom? Oh my god. Hold on. Let's monument moment. You can have whatever you want. Uh, although that's not ideal. That is not ideal. Because then we can get Jar of Blooded at any time, and that's pretty bad. You know, the wandering salesman, he can just be like, it's look who it is. And, y you know, getting, like, a concussion from somebody dropping a glass jar on your head is uh, probably not, not nice. It can't be good for your physical health. Now, we did get out of that one pretty easily. There were no enemies there, by the way. I'm trying to... What was our first enemy? Our first enemy was the Kanoko Gatherer. And we haven't fought anybody since then. So it literally just is whoever's next after Kanoko. Um, I think we'll do Stamina there, just for fun. So we should be able to get Ending A here. Especially, like, once we get uh, Eldritch Possession, we can just go in here and do this instantly. So I feel like we do Fear Festival now. Um, and we'll, we'll always take ending A here no matter what, because even, okay, let's say we were playing a character who needed the stats, the, the, you would be taking 6% doom plus, right? Like you would be taking at least, like, e let's say you have like the best possible thing where you can do like 12 damage or like half of the damage in one turn you're still taking, like, 3 to 2% extra doom, so that would be, you know, like, fucking 8 or 9% doom, minimum. And that's assuming that you have the really good, like, combat action for some reason. Like, you are not doing that on Night Errant ever. I've, I, I've thought about it before. Unless you're playing Toshiaki, which, if you're playing Toshiaki, you're using Bookstrap anyways, so no. But Toshiaki would be the only character you could justify that on because of his insane doom reduction. If you get Fear Festival on Knight Errant, you are always, always taking the minimum 5% Doom option. At minimum, okay? The the idea of going for the Spiral Hoodie on Knight Errant is, like, not even... Like, you shouldn't even consider that. Like, it's not worth considering. It, it's the death nail of your run, if you think about it. Now, we can do... I, I want to do it like this because we're trying to minimize the amount of damage that we take, so... We can do something like this. Oh, we're not that... Oh, God, I should have put one point in knowledge. Or, or you know, maybe the game should stop giving me this. Then maybe we would have been able to guarantee that she's dead. Uh, so, Infested Girl is our second enemy, by the way, so we do need to remember this. But, um... Because, like, this would would do it big. Like, this would do it really big, but we could only do 65-65 and then we take 3. That's not something that I can uh, abide. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to take 2 stamina damage in total. And then we're just going to kill her. It's... 
not what you want to be doing on Infested Girl because she's an easy enemy. And so for the most part, it's like you shouldn't have to worry about it. We'll, we'll do that once because it's just 1% doom. But uh, you, you shouldn't really be doing that for Infested Girl. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but it exists. Seal of Bramel is kind of pog. If we get the opportunity to cast that for free, I absolutely will. Honestly, you know what? I'll be real with you. With Masochistic and no Fearful, we can actually just cast this, like, right now. Like, I'm not even joking. With Masoch Masochistic is that good. Because it's free healing for every stamina enemy, and it's, like, neutral for every reason enemy when we're playing as Ayaka, and we're gonna, like, annihilate every single thing in our path. Uh, that was a little bit risky, I will admit. That was a little bit risky. But the, uh, purposely losing stamina. But we can't really lose reason right here. Uh, I would love to see the gunshot. I would love... Uh, get a grip, that's fine. I would love to hear the gunshot. The gunshot would be so pog right now. I do not want to see combat. If we see the gunshot, we're so happy. That, like, increases our chances of winning a lot. If we see combat, like we do now, then we have to do this, and we just have to say, okay, 69% doom, whatever. Fetid Fumes is interesting. We really want Eldritch Possession here. We did not get it. We have to take healing here. That's non-negotiable. We'll take knowledge. Because knowledge is just helping us out the most right now. You know, I feel like I've been trying to level other stats than my combat stat uh, recently. Like, I've been trying to experiment with that. And every time I do it, I'm like, oh man, I wish I leveled knowledge instead. So, you know, we're coming around on that. I feel like if we popped the Inspiring Novel, we could just do Mermaids right now. But the problem that I have with that is that... Actually, yeah, we should, because then we'll be strong for, uh, we'll, we'll level up one more time. Um... I'm gonna be real with you, I think we get rid of, uh... I mean, getting rid of one of the panics would be huge. But, like, I want to get rid of both of the panics, and I want to get rid of this. But if we get... If, if we get... Whatchamacallit. What do we care about more? Our combat or our stats? I, I, I'm going to prioritize my stats here. Because until we get Eldritch Possession, there's no point to allow, like, a curse like that to be real. Because we're suffering greatly. Like, yes, if we had Eldritch Possession, would our stats go down more than they would go up? Uh, yes, on net. Absolutely, but... We just need good stats right now, because this benefits us both combat-wise and it benefits us in, um, whatchamacallit, everything else. So, we're gonna pop the Inspiring Novel. It's do or die here. We have to get Ending A here. And I mean, oh, we could be at an 85% chance to hit. I mean, I guess that just goes to show you how good the, uh, the Heavy Duty Flashlight is, that even after minus 20% accuracy, you still have the coin flip is on your side odds of hitting. Uh, now, that's not what you want. Uh, you want more than a coin flip. You want overwhelming odds in your favor. But, you know, I'm not going to say no. Now, how do I think the run is going? I think the, the run is probably a loss, if I had to guess. I would say that we are most likely going to lose, but I, I can't really say for certain one way or another. We definitely need to go get Cursed at the Tree to get some stamina back. And actually, hold on, do we have Paranoia? Chance of losing reason? Yeah, okay, we do. So that's a little bit concerning, but we should ultimately be fine. I'm not particularly worried about it. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that. It doesn't actually give you any benefit, but it just lets you skip the event, so... We got Fearful, that's a little bit disappointing, but Masochistic will cancel it out perfectly. And then we got Traumatized, which is, uh, max reason loss. Okay, that's fine. I mean, not really in the grand scheme of things, but it could be a lot worse. We gotta kill this enemy. We gotta kill this enemy. It's not even negotiable, we have to kill this guy. 
Oh my god. Look oh my god, our attacks are amazing. Look at that. Woo! I can't complain about that. That was really nice. Um Okay, Eldritch Possession would go hard here. It's it's look who it is. Uh Doom Effigy, if we could get it, would be really nice, but I'm actually okay with this, I think. We gotta heal. And look at that. The lighthouse is secure. We just have to live long enough to see it happen. I wonder if the fire axe is something that we should use here. Because the speed is abyss- No, the chance to hit's horrible. The chance to hit's horrible. That's- that's literally just it. Branded needs to go. Branded needs to go. I see it immediately. It needs to go. Insomnia and holes are really bad, but Branded needs to go immediately. There's so much RNG dependent on whether or not we're gonna win this run that any excess doom that we can dodge is just, we have to. What does the rock ring do? Max reason. I mean, you want to go down to max six reason? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wait, our sever is going to go hard. Holy shit, that does, that does go hard. Oh my god. I mean, damn. I'm not gonna complain about that. We have the, um... So, halved your weapon's damage. So, two. Plus one for the funny bonus. And then plus one for each, right? That's how it works. Oh, that's a shame. We rolled exactly an 11. Rock ring, not clutch moment. Um... Yeah, sure. What, are we gonna roll a fucking 12 on the safe location just to scare me? Yeah. Uh, we can actually afford to play it like this. Because we have unlimited attack speed. <laughs> because we have unlimited attack speed. We could play it like that. Okay. This is it. This determines whether or not we win or lose. Oh my god. No! You can't do that to me! You cannot time skip me like that. Holy crap. That's not fair. That's not okay. Uh, actually, by getting rid of Branded, we might still have a chance. Because I remember it was the Infested Girl, right? If it's not Infested Girl, well, you know, that's pretty bad. It is Heart of Darkness, though. It's always Heart of Darkness. It's always time skip. It always is one of those things. Uh-oh, the dog's barking. The dog is barking. She bark. That's okay. We're almost done. Okay, it's, uh... Yeah, it's Infested Girl. Hope. I, I, Web will, will remember sometimes. Hopium. Doomed Effigy goes hard, but, uh, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't help us out right now, actually. We have three stats that are in the in the double digits. That's kind of nutty. All right, come on, come on, come on, do a big. Listen, goodbye, Takashi. I don't even. This is so trippy to look at. S dot attacks dot attacks dot attacks dot attacks dot attacks. I just realized if we didn't kill him there somehow, we would actually just die. Which is really funny. But, uh... Anyways. That was an Ayaka run that existed. One of them. Of all time, even? It's an Ayaka run that certainly exists. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe out there. Have a good one. I will see you on the next episode of World of Horror, or whatever you decide to watch next. Bye!